Welcome back to Speed. Have you ever heard of co-working spaces? Well, as the name explains, it's an office space that's shared between multiple companies. While it's a boon for startups and small companies, Speed's Dipashri Das found out that it also makes perfect business sense for the operators. Beautiful Basora Street. With its majestic spires, small boutiques and eclectic crowd is a sure draw on Singapore's tourist map. But these young men are here for a purpose, to work. And this is their office. If you walk down Basora Street, Haji Lane, it's, it's almost like a slice out of Singapore. It doesn't really feel like Singapore. It doesn't, it's not sterile, it's not so clean, you know, it's not so uh, strict. You know, there's a, there's a life that's, you know, it feels very organic, you know. And, you know, that kind of creative freedom is something that I think we value instead of being locked into your traditional cubicle farm or your Shutton Way streets. This is no ordinary office. It is a co-working space, one where young startups share office space as they take their first tentative steps into the business world. Co-founder Ri Wen Chua started Hackerspace with two other partners in November 2009. They sensed the need for a physical space for tech-based startups to come together. The word hacker traditionally means somebody who wants to push the limit of his art. So it could be finding innovative solutions to problems. Uh, and, and some of these problems might indeed be technical. So a hacker space in that sense is really a physical space that's catered to this sort of person who wants to explore and he wants to learn and he wants to share ideas. And that's pretty much how hacker spaces came about. Hackerspace is a global movement that has been around for 10 years now with large spaces in Berlin, San Francisco and Tokyo. But the aim everywhere is the same, easy access to offer space for startups. In Hackerspace Singapore, you can get started for as low as 64 Singapore dollars per month. That will allow you access to a desk in this common area and its facilities, including internet. Regular membership starts at 128 Singapore dollars per month and goes up to 512 Singapore dollars for resident membership. Members have access to the library, a cosy yet well-stocked space where they can do their reading. Resident members have dedicated desks in The Zone, a quieter area. With colourful curtains separating one desk from another, this defies all notions of what office cubicles ought to look like. And when taking on the very real business world ends for the day, you can head to the pantry for a cup of coffee or take on the virtual world instead. Ruin and his partners currently run this co-working space voluntarily and as a non-profit venture. And while they're exploring avenues to make hackerspace profitable, their more immediate focus is to rally the startup community together. By virtue of the fact that we have a community here allows the startups to be able to you know, exchange ideas a lot more easily um, than they would be able to if they were all stuck alone in their own separate homes or uh, at various Starbucks outlets around the island. By virtue of the fact that we have gelled many communities together, it allows us to pull off uh, additional things like organizing uh, events like bar camps. Startups like Flocations are taking advantage of this community setup to get their ideas off the ground. We can brainstorm, share ideas, share. When we're pissed off, at least we, we have someone to listen to us. Uh, plus for help on business ideas, technical issues, uh, whatever. So it's very helpful. But it's definitely not all work and no play for the boys at Hackerspace. Being located near Arab Street means easy access to many cups of Detarek and some stimulating conversations. If free and easy hackerspace is not your cup of tea and you want something different, head over to Smart Space on 261 Waterloo Street. Michael Chan founded Smart Space in early 2011 with a vision of creating a corporate co-working and collaboration space for design, media and technology ventures. We do have obviously a co-working facility, but more primarily I think we want to be known as a a collaboration space and also a service-oriented agency. So we have our corporate services and we, we have in mind that we are incentivized by the number of transactions or how, how fast these companies grow. 
I find that when we are more service-based, I think we, we, we cater more closely to what businesses need. More structured and service-oriented also means that the cost of membership here is higher. Starting at a basic of 500 Singapore dollars a month, rising to 5,000 Singapore dollars a year. You can either choose open working spaces such as this, or dedicated rooms like these here, which come in various sizes. Michael, a lawyer by training, spends time with startups vetting their business plans and helping them navigate complex legal waters. A win win situation for both parties. We make money every time a new venture is formed. So, on company incorporation, registering a business, it could be a non profit, it could be a society. And then I do charge it like. Um, like a basic uh, law firm or like a corporate secretarial firm. So people can come here and they can, they can get their business plans done. Of course, they pay the monthly fee. But on top of that, they also pay for services. One of the additional benefits that members can access at SmartSpace is this dedicated event and networking space. A space to court investors or host a mini conference. It was probably this combination of factors that attracted startups like Trip Villas to Smart Space. It allowed us the flexibility to say that, you know, um, uh, uh, we can start with one desk uh, and, 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 and then ramp up to, you know, seven, eight, nine people. We are a startup in a hurry. So we have been uh, growing extremely fast. We wanted something that's plug and play. We feel the office space. Being in smart space gives us this flexibility and this ability to grow very fast without having to worry about anything. As an increasing number of foreign companies choose Singapore as their operating base, they need to be guided through the intricate process of company incorporation. Yvonne Lim, partner at Smart Space, is at hand to field any such queries. Uh, I would recommend that you will start with a private limited company. After all, rent and revenue from services form equal parts in the company's turnover. Besides access to the 8,000 square feet of well-planned office space and an array of services, it seems that what most startups benefit from is a spirit of community and collaboration. A spirit that's also propelling the tenants of hackerspace and smart space towards bigger and better things. Whether at work or while having fun, a game of table tennis or a relaxed conversation with like-minded individuals, this camaraderie may just provide the spark for the next big thing. And that's it for this edition. See you next time when the Speed team deconstructs whether the new stamp duty tax has had any impact on foreigners entering the Singapore market so far. And in response to a viewer's question, we explore the circumstance whereby you can have an address in Singapore and yet still be unable to receive mail reliably. All that and more from me, Otelli Edwards, and the Speed team next time we see you.